I may introduce you to Molly Schwartz. She actually came here from Finland. Yes. Perfect. So, and she is from the Helsinki Institute of Technology. She you are an affiliate scholar for uh, at the Alto University of Art, Design, Architecture, Media Lab, and National Library of Finland. I have read. And we need to put this online, otherwise we don't see you on the screen. And you will talk about the uh, my data approach and also why actually digital health revolution in Finland is relevant. So thank you very much and let's start hacking. Thank you all very much. I'm very excited to be here in Bern. It is beautiful and much warmer than Helsinki. So as was introduced, my name is Molly Schwartz. I'm here from the Helsinki Institute for Information Technology and I'm working with two colleagues there on this new project called My Data. So today I want to give you an intro to My Data. I want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing in Finland and demo a prototype so that you can get an idea of what our vision actually looks like. Um, and we actually are working on this project very much in affiliation with Open Knowledge Finland. All three of us are active members there, and this is highly publicized there as well. So, just to get you started, uh, my data is basically a human-centric approach to organizing our personal data. To set the landscape, our personal data is everywhere, as you probably well know. Uh, a lot of your location data is collected by telecommunications companies. When we're looking at these wonderful open data sets that governments are putting out, some of them involve personal data. They involve things like the Ministry of Transportation actually tracking where you go to try to provide smarter services. Um, your health data is located places. Your retail data, your purchasing habits are collected by different corporations. And oftentimes, we're not very well aware of what's happening with this data. And even more detrimentally, we're not organizing how it's managed, and we don't have access back to it. So for for example, when you have a loyalty card to some kind of uh, grocery store or something like that and they're collecting your purchasing habits, you don't have any way to then go online to their website and say, hey, let me download what my purchasing habits were because I'm curious to link it up to my financial management service so I can see how much money I'm spending on these different projects, right? And when you start thinking about this, oftentimes the reaction and some things that we've seen are paranoia. Your thought is, oh my goodness, I have no idea what's happening with this personal data. My privacy is being violated. I would rather get off the grid. I'm going to ditch my smartphone, get an old Nokia, problem solved, right? But as we talked about this morning, there are loads of great opportunities and benefits of having open data sets, of providing smarter services, of doing big data analytics. We can see how thick the ice is in Finland. We can um, have smarter procurement services and things like that. And this is also a huge business opportunity. Uh, Boston Consulting Group uh, came out estimating that within a few years, uh, personal data will be a $3 trillion industry. And you have places like the World Economic Forum saying that personal data is actually an entirely new asset class. So this is a growing issue and you all are probably well aware of the legislation coming out of um, the EU regarding personal data protection and management. So the question is, how do we provide an ethical solution that puts the individual back in control of his or her personal data without hampering the potential innovations and actually putting in place a system that helps facilitate future innovation? So the purpose of my data is to create an open, standardized, and mediated personal data architecture system that empowers the individual to manage how his or her personal data is um, access, collected, shared, and linked in ways that actually makes the individual an agent of innovation rather than kind of the object or the victim in this larger innovative scheme. So the my data principles are that, as I mentioned, it's human centric. Uh, each person has a right to his or her data, so you have a right. And sometimes we actually do have the legal right now to access our data. So for example, uh, you can do something like my colleague Anthi did, and you can contact your mobile operator and say, I would like to download the data that you have about me for this time period. And he got back a huge stack of printed out papers of all of his transactions. That's not hugely useful if you're looking to then apply it to another service or a different API. So putting the individual in control and trying to maximize the benefits of data collection while minimizing the losses of privacy. We're looking at usability of data. So as I just referred to the idea of getting a stack of PDFs 
uh, when you want to get your personal data back is not very useful if you're looking at ways to reapply or repurpose that data and build other services and business models on top of that. So we want it to be machine readable in open formats um, using APIs and using a set of standards that let all these um, different personal data sets that you're downloading be interoperable. That all these data sets that are coming from different organizations or different sectors, that you have this kind of management um, dashboard that lets you connect them all and have them be interoperable. And also looking at an open business environment. As I said, interoperability is a core uh, component of this, as is data portability. So with my data, as I'll explain in a second, a little bit further, we're looking at providing this data management level through a My Data Operator system. And a big component of that is that there will be different types of My Data Operators, different organizations or corporations who are running this My Data Operator with your My Data account. And it will be entirely data portable. So you can switch from one operator to another if they're providing better services. Uh, just like the idea now when you're emphasizing data portability, for example, if you have an account with one bank and you want to switch, the idea is you can take all your data from that and easily switch to another bank if you think they would provide you with better services. Uh, so this concept is that we're connecting these different data sources. This uh, visualization is supposed to give you the idea that the individual is the correlation and the control point for all these different data sources. So as, as you have data coming in from transportation and different things like that, the individual is managing all this on one platform, seeing how their data is being collected and shared, having a platform by which they can manage the consents. So the real core part of the My Data Dashboard is that you are managing your consent to who is accessing what data and then how you can then send it to another data source, right? And then from there, we can build off other applications and services on top of that. Uh, and another concept is that people are building out rich profiles. So switching from this kind of big data analytic systems where people are implicitly profiled, where they collect different um, items of data about you and then create kind of a profile that will, for example, predict your buying habits. Instead, have people explicitly profile, this is the information I'm going to provide you with and it's controlled and maintained by the individual, and that creates a more accurate and in some ways actually a more intense relationship between the individual and between the organization, but one that's ethical and one that the individual is in control of. Uh, so this is another visualization of our My Data Operator model. There's the individual, your My Data account platform at the top. You're managing the consents that you're giving to the um, data storage source, and then also, managing from there the consent to what we call a data sync, so the people who are using the data. So it's this kind of interoperable platform that manages these different APIs that are all hooked up, it's distributed instead of centralized, and the individual is the correlation point. Uh, and just to give you a sense of what's happening with my data in Finland, we're making a lot of moves. Uh, this is an English translation that's a little dodgy of uh, the new Finnish government's, one of the items in their strategic priorities, which actually was influenced directly by our My Data initiative, even though they don't mention it by name. So the people's right to decide about and monitor their personal information will be enhanced. And we've been working with uh, S Group, which is one of the largest retail companies in Finland. They have a loyalty card program, which has five, uh, three million accounts out of five million Finns. Um, so that's collecting a lot of information. We're uh, working with one of the largest banks. We're working with telecom companies. And we're working to try to develop out this My Data stack and be able to use these as use cases. And one of the major use cases that we're looking at is this digital health revolution project, which actually has My Data as the core of how it will operate. And the idea is to put individuals back in control of how their health data is managed. So for example, if you have uh, information that's collected by some kind of smart object like a Fitbit, you can then apply that to some kind of calorie counter and maybe share it with your doctor and things like that. And the idea is that my data will be the enabler or the facilitator for this system. So that's me and my contact information. We are actually, so right now we've been doing a lot of work in Finland, but we're at a moment where we're really looking to be collaborating with partners in other countries because obviously, especially as you look at the data protection legislation that's going on, this is not going to stay country by country and it won't work well that way. We need these things to be interoperable on a global scale. Um, and so you can feel free to find me on Twitter or email me. I have a link here. I uh, emailed out this, I tweeted out this presentation on my Twitter account. There's a link to this presentation with a link to a white paper in English that we just put out from the Finnish Ministry of Transportation and a prototype, which I will show you now. 
So this is kind of a brief visualization. Yes, uh, if you use, if you have access to your data, the idea is that all of us will one day be healthy standing tree yogis on a cliff. Um, so you go down, you say, let's get started on visualizing my data today and how it started. You log in, blah, 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 and then welcome to my data. So these are these different um, services that you have. For, so for example, S Group, the retail chain we mentioned, my fitness pal, some kind of fitness tool that you're using, your um, insurance account, all these different things from different sectors all managed on one platform. And then let's say that you want to connect your MyFitnessPal account to, to be able to share the data with other things. So for example, you can take in your purchasing habits, what food you're buying from S Group, and have it connected to your fitness data. And this is a really core part, this idea of a common consent model. So as I mentioned, the idea of my data is you're managing your consents. And we have these kind of different icons. So you have a standard way to see, um, I kind of share this level of data with this person, this level of data with that person, kind of like how Creative Commons works now. And then you can decide to add it to my data. So then my data acts as this other kind of layer that sits on top of all of this. You link it, and then you go back to my fitness pal. So now you see the different data sources that my fitness pal can access through your my data account and then what other services can access your data from your my fitness pal. And then you can look in general at your different services. There are different ways to visualize uh, what information is going through where. So the central column is how it's organized through my data and you can also see them interlinked so you can see the idea of how these different sectors connect. And then you can discover new services based on your past habits, just like on Amazon. Um, so that's the basic concept. There will be a workshop later with some of the things that have been going on with the Similar My Data Initiative in Switzerland. Lots of these different similar kinds of services or ideas or concepts are popping up in different countries and we're really looking to link them so we can set kind of a standard protocol and model that will let them all be interoperable. And I look forward to any of you reaching out if you have any thoughts or ideas. Thank you.